Sunless Skies is the sequel to Fail Better's moody 2015 Odyssey, Sunless Sea. Similar to that game, take over the ship's captain, exploring a strange and fascinating world. Unlike that game, Sunless Skies exercises player-friendly design roots of frustration inherent in its long-form roguelike structure. After an inauspicious start, you inherit a flying train engine from your dying former captain. From there, you're free to explore space as you see fit, your primary objective being to satisfy the personal ambition of your captain. You'll accomplish this through two modes of gameplay, the first being active navigation of space, where you'll search for treasures and new ports. Space is also the most dangerous part of your adventure. Monsters and pirates drift among the stars, and the threat of starvation or freezing is omnipresent. However, you're not helpless. A variety of weapons can be purchased for your ship, including cannons, missiles, and mines. These weapons all fill their roles reasonably well, but you'll need a little aim against the enemies intelligent enough to dodge your attacks. Uh, however, in a big improvement from the previous game, you have an active dodge command. So, so your ship, you have little jets on the side, and you can scooch back and forth. So as long as the shot coming at you, you can scooch to the left, scooch to the right, dodge the attacks, which is a, a which I really like that improvement. It, the increased mobility helps the combat feel more kinetic and more interactive. But you might die once or twice while you get used to how quickly your ship consumes fuel and supplies. However, Sun the Skies demonstrates the leniency for more casual captains or new captains. Enemy vessels, monsters, floating space junk, and derelict ships can all provide fuel or supplies while you're sailing. A few expensive pieces of equipment such as butchery tools or mining drills can also provide additional opportunities to harvest new supplies. So if you run, so you're less likely to run dry because there's some stuff floating out there for you. And even if you do run dry, you'll at least get a dice roll to save yourself. Say you run out of fuel, you can send out the emergency flare and maybe someone will come see it and save you or whatever. Unfortunately, the void is as often dull as exciting. Sometimes you stumble across active battles, new ports, ruptures in space-time, or some strange alien creatures. These events are exciting, or at least threatening, and require some response from a player. Other times your trip is just dull and uneventful. You'll just steer towards the next port and wait. With so many great games full of so much content, this can be hard to stomach at times. There's no fast travel here, which is a shame because space is big. The initial area feels quite large. I didn't exactly do any scientific comparisons. But it feels, uh, it feels smaller than the Sunless Sea original map, especially with the less dead space in between the areas of interest. But where you get a greater sense of scale is that there are four such areas. So you travel between these areas, and these areas are all big, and all lots of ports and lots of stuff going on. So it's, it's, an intimidating amount to a map, it's an intimidating amount of map to explore. If you like exploration, then there's, there's tons of sailing around and exploring and tons of map to reveal. The second mode of gameplay occurs primarily while your ship is docked. Here the game turns into a text-based adventure that asks you to make a variety of decisions regarding exploration, dialogue, resource management, shopping, etc. As this is where the meat of the game truly lies, there's thousands, there's so much copy here. Uh, there are wildly imaginative and creative scenarios and characters. I do mean imaginative because there's things like tangible time, words that come to life, men live on stars and did walk among the living. So if you're not a fan of fiction, this game may not be for you. And even if you are a really avid reader, it can be a little overwhelming. The world feel better as creative is impressively creative, but relentlessly imaginative. Almost every port presents you with something absurd. Tons of purple prose, lots of adjectives. You're parsing through these walls of fantastical text, talking about these crazy things, which fits in with the world they created very well and all makes sense in their their universe. But if you're it, it, it can be tiring because <laughs> it takes a lot of it asks a lot of your imagination. So you might end up tempted to simply click through these uh, dialogue choices. Furthermore, Sun the Skies has a bit of an organizational problem. There's tons of quests and stories to play through, but they stack up quickly, and you don't have an easy way to reference them outside of your logbook. So after a while, you have so many objectives running around. It's easy to forget most of them until you stumble into the right place at the right time. Quest markers or some other UI-friendly objective reminder would have been really nice. So as it stands, you'll either need to reference the logbook or just d pick one or two objectives and sail around. The biggest improvement of Sunless Skies over its predecessor is in progression. Uh, like Sunless Sea, your captain gains experience and cash through your adventures. Unlike Sunless Sea, your progress adds real character to your captains. 
Level ups predictably give you the choice to boost two of the four character stats, but additionally these choices also add your character's backstory and personality. For example, maybe your captain had a rough stint in prison that increases his martial iron attribute and provides a connection to the criminal underworld. Really like this, adds more flavor to your character and gives you a little bit of role-playing opportunities. Uh, most importantly, if you perish, your progress carries over to a new captain. So this new captain inherits the prior captain's world, he gets a star chart, gets his exploration experience, gets his bankroll, gets spare items, maybe even the ship itself, he gets a lot of stuff. So that removes one of my big frustrations with the first game would be it was a dangerous world, and if you died, you got very little. And it could be, it was a long game to play. So I would, I would just get bored. So I'm like, okay, I did this first hour of the game like four times already. Just give me something new. So with this system, you are punished for death, but it's not a complete reset. Sunless Sky is a worthy successor to the epic Sunless Sea, expanding and improving on the original in every way. So you're looking for hours and hours of exploration in a very alien universe. Sunless Skies is an easy recommendation, but if you don't have the patience to do lots and lots and lots of reading with intermittent waiting, maybe reconsider. Also, one final note. There was a... I would have had this review done like a month ago. The game came out, is now available on Steam. Uh, I think it's like $15. Let me just check here. Now that the review part... Ugh, is over proper. It is available on Steam now. What I had it done like a month ago? Yeah, $25. What I had it done about a month ago, but then I had my little flooding incident. And they did release an update today to address some of the issues that I had <laughs> and other people have had. So the world is now a little close together, so that waiting's reduced a little bit. There's a little more tension, so those, those spurts of boredom, although probably appropriate for a, a sailing simulator type experience, have been hopefully addressed with this update. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.